Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Derek the Brony Gamer reaction video to Death Battle Scrooge McDuck versus Shovel Knight. Now, as I said, I did say it is. Uh, I think it's a stupid fight, stupid idea to put because. He's just a duck. How can he beat a? Sh how can he? Be how can he beat Shovel Knight? He's got a shovel. And he has armor. McDuck, he's all the elder. How can he fight? There's no f way he can fight. But sorry for the delay. Yeah, my last video was really short, super short. That was like a week ago. When I was about to start to record, I was testing it to make sure it's not lagging. Like, so I can hear myself too. I was, sorry, I was trying to start my intro, my friends would stop, and I got, I got peed off and I stopped playing. Yeah. Really peed off. So, and yes, I. Yeah, yes, school is keeping me away from this. I have to pay attention to school more than this. So, yeah. So, there might be an uploaded video. Just one a week or two a week. Probably. Not sure. But, if I have time, I'll get right on to recording for myself. For you guys. It's like Half Life 2, Fires of Pinky, is anything, Amnesia, or TF2. I haven't uploaded TF2 for a while, I just realized that. But, maybe this week I will upload a TF2 video. I will. So, yeah. And if you, if you do, let's stop talking and start to watch this fight. Might be intense, but probably be a tense fight. So let's start. Squid Tag is a new profile picture now. Looks, looks good. No, it's, it's Some good. people it's adventure great. for wealth. For others, the wealth is in the adventure. Either nice. way, you'll be successful if you can Too bounce up your enemies' it. heads. Like Scrooge McDuck, the wealthiest waterfowl to ever live. And Shovel Knight, a shining example of the code of chivalry. He's whiz and I think this fight is going to be like pixelized. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Right? In 1867, Scrooge McDuck was born to a poor family in Glasgow, Scotland. He United was Kingdom! He a relatively normal duckling <laughs> until his 10th birthday. Scrooge's father took him to see the remains of the old McDuck clan castle. See, their family wasn't always super poor, and Scrooge was inspired by the sight of their former glory. So the next day, he got a job and earned his first money ever. A dime. A dime. Problem was, it was an American dime, and Scrooge was in Scotland. Naturally feeling pretty cheated, Scrooge swore he'd build his fortune by being, I quote, tougher than the toughies and I think sharper the than the sharpies. So he hopped over to America to start his quest for wealth. And judging by his money vault today, where he literally Super swims Bowl. in gold, I'd say he did a pretty effing good job. No obstacle was too difficult to keep him from fortune. By my estimations, his entire net worth today rests around 300 quadrillion dollars. Rich as he is, he's gotta defend his treasure trove somehow. So this wealthy waterfowl's got more guns than I do. Not to mention the trusty cannons he has hidden around his manor. Haha, <laughs> nothing like some old-fashioned artillery for home defense. Scrooge also has a number of unorthodox high-tech firearms. Or as normal people call them, laser guns. My favorite is the one that can shoot through solid steel titanium. It's called the Burglar right. Stunner, but I'm pretty sure that'll do a hell of a lot more than stun you. Well, my favorite would be Scrooge's Neutra Friction and Anti-Inertia Rays. By removing a target's natural friction and inertia, these guns can turn a foe so slippery they can't grip anything, or take away all momentum from that foe's movement and weight. Without friction, a person will slide miles upon miles with no hope of stopping themselves. Without inertia, a cannonball will have even less impact than falling leaves, 
though it is important to note that these guns do not affect personal gravity. Uh, yeah, science and stuff. Oh, if I were him, I'd science. prefer the feel of one of his rifles or swords. Or his signature sidearm, his trusty cane. What's so special about a dusty old cane, you ask? Well, just look at the old quack go! Not every duck can turn their cane into both a club and a pogo stick. Even when he's unarmed, Scrooge's thirst for wealth has pushed his body past many preconceived limits. He possesses incredible strength, speed, and durability. Not to mention, the dude's got There's some no serious way waves. That One time when he was he's stuck in the savannah, he walked right up to a lion, he's beat it in a duck, roaring you know, match, and then just rode it all the way to town. He's also a surprisingly skilled marksman. Like some sort of gun-toting Mr. Miyagi, he can shoot flies out of the air okay, with perfect so... precision. And he's no slouch with a blade. Apparently, Buffalo okay, Bill I'm... taught him how to knife fight in... I'm really impressed. Uh, engine style. I'm really impressed. Uh, and, and now's a great time to remind you that Scrooge is pretty old. It was a different time. Uh, racism aside, it takes a lot to put this mighty mallard down. He survived the Titanic sinking, being frozen solid in the Yukon, fighting hordes of wild animals, and taking a cannon shot to the face before being dragged through a minefield. He's even survived a trip to the literal center of the Earth, which, if you've forgotten, is pretty much super lava. That's putting it mildly. The Earth's core is estimated to be well over 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit. More than hot enough to cook Science. your goose. He's outrun a cheetah, which can reach 75 miles per hour. He stopped a charging water buffalo, which can weigh up to 2,600 pounds. And did you ever hear that legend where George Washington threw a silver dollar across the Potomac River? Well, Scrooge can do that too. And he even caught the coin on the other side. Because Scrooge isn't going to waste a single dollar. Seems pretty impressive, but Scrooge has some massively problematic flaws. Least of all is his age. He's 150 years old. That won't do him any favors in a fight. And why can't he fly? I mean, he's a duck with his own private plane, and he has human teeth, and they really should just hire a poultry scientist at Disney. Oh, I'll send my resume. Well, more importantly would be his overpowering greed. He can often lose sight of his goals or explode into an uncontrollable rage if someone threatens his wealth. He is pretty selfish and has a one-track mind. I don't know if the uncontrollable rage part, though, is such a bad thing. Certainly not in some situations. Like the time Soapy Slick tried to rip Scrooge off, steal his property, and humiliate him by chaining him to a steamboat and making fun of his letters from home, including one informing Scrooge of his mother's passing. That's more than enough to piss Scrooge off, so much that he literally tore the entire boat apart with his bare hands, or wings. Holy damn, that's some real foul strength. Okay, Just goes I... to show that nothing can stand between Scrooge and his wealth. I don't know which was wilder in those days. The wolves or me? A long time ago, so nice. the world was wild and adventurers roamed the land. The most famous of whom were partners Shield Knight and Shovel Knight. You can tell how oh, good they are so by nice. the giant piles of loot behind them. Shovel Knight so and Shield names. Knight traveled together and they were the stuff of legend. That is, until the Tower of Fate. Once inside, a cursed amulet knocked Shovel Knight out cold. When he woke up, Shield Knight was gone and the tower was sealed shut. And boy, did that bum him out. So like all depressed heroes, he abandoned everything and went to the wilderness to do a bunch of farming and most likely drinking. Soon after he retired, an evil woman called the Enchantress took power, along with a group of villainous knights known as the Order of No Quarter. Ah, get it? It's funny. So, maybe retiring wasn't the most responsible idea. Man's gotta mourn, Wiz. Man's gotta mourn. You mean like when you took a week off to mourn after your divorce? Because I'm pretty sure all you did was get drunk and shoot fireworks at my house. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Man, that was a real good mourn. Well, anyway, Shovel Knight's break didn't last long. After the Enchantress and her knights took hold of the land, the Tower of Fate unsealed. Knowing it was his only chance to find out what happened to Shield Knight, he dug back into action. And with him, he took his mightiest weapon. A shovel. Don't sell it short, it's not just any shovel, it's a shovel blade. And thanks to its surprisingly versatile nature, it can slash through anything from blade. rats to- Holy I wish crap, I had one. did he just kill a dragon with that thing? Yes he did. That reminds me of the guy. time See. I made my own-